tiny details that change a marvelous and big aspect of your life. It can be the title to your favorite artist's song, or it can be your favorite painting. But in my case, it is a series of tiny, small mistakes that then me to who I truly am. My first epiphany that I experienced was when I was in local school, around the age of 10 or so. Before I did came to Chatham College, I was in a Chinese all-speaking local school. How many of you here have been to another school before Chatham College, that's not including SPS, or maybe a local school perhaps, or you maybe have moved? Just like me. When I was in, when I was six years old and seven, I had very, I had difficult communicating with my friends because, well, like most other children, I did not speak, did not speak um, uh, fluent Chinese, and my Chinese was always slow and dark, and I had to pause and think before I was <coughs> maybe kind of like a slow learner and such a thing. I had well, my friends and my friends also spoke Cantonese, so I had trouble communicating, and I was very pressured to do things sometimes that I thought would fit in with other people. When I changed to Chatham College, I realized that a lot of people like me spoke English instead of Chinese, even though they were born in Hong Kong and raised as Cantonese. According to research, in 2018, the United States National Scientific and Cultural Organization Research around 28 countries showed that over 50% of people drop out of schools because, well, they couldn't speak their, their school's language. They didn't know how to communicate. They're just like me, stuck in this maze and not, not knowing how to uh, find a way out. Not being able to finish uh, this puzzle of life. Epiphanies are like a power-up. Like that cherry in the Pac-Man Pac games, or they're just a small boost in your life, like that daily coffee drink. <coughs> Do you know that when, uh, in 2013, people got really ETS, they did it with a, they did it with a scandalous and almost bankrupt agency, and never really had the time to have enough money and spend their time measurably, as they were always boring clothes from other companies and had really no money at all. However, now, six to five, five to six years later, they are now known as the world's most phenomenal board for you, and they have a net worth of over $35 million. As a child, Thomas Edison had trouble learning, and he was always very he was active. He was always very active. His mother pulled him out of school because his teachers wouldn't treat him fair. And now, he is the person who provided all of this, lights. Without him, our world would be in a darkness, and we do deserve, we do deserve the lights to see the truth. I'm sure many of you here have iPhones or many AirPods in your face. Steve Jobs was a college dropout, and he became bored of college and didn't really know how to handle it perfectly, so he just dropped out. But however, now he's known as the world's most successful electronic company's CEO, and the world's also most famous person to ever create such an expressive technology. Here's the biggest epiphany I ever experienced. When I was in year nine, I was with one of my friends when we went to a friend's sleepover. Sure, at the beginning it was pretty fun, but in the middle she pulled me aside and she told me these three words. I am bi. Now, if you don't know what bi being bi is, it's basically my sexuality where a person likes two genders, male and female. At that time, I really wasn't sure what my sexuality was, and being raised on my parents' beliefs, I was pretty rude and inconvenient uh, mean to her and disrespectful. But when time passed and she started not talking to me, I really missed her. And it made me realize that sexuality, genders, no matter what we are, no matter what social status you have, we're so you. No matter how many mistakes you create, no matter how many times you fall and scrape your knees, you're still you. You have your own personality. And being trans, being gay, being bi does not change us. When I was in your setting, my friends and I would get into small 
and meaningless arguments that pretty much disturb a lot of teachers, for example, Mr. Lewis, because he had to mind our topics and listen to a lot. one of us when I'm going to be as the other person. And you soon realize in your age that these arguments are just dumb and pointless, and I should really think before I start speaking, because if I did it, I could say something really dumb, like, let's say, like, I think you're ugly, or I think you ought to be in that way, but it's fine, you'll be better next time. Do you know that over 74% of LGBT people still feel the need to hide their sexuality and gender because of the world's discrimination? This just proves that we, as humans, shouldn't discriminate and shouldn't object to people and leave them out just because of their sexuality or gender. When I was a kid, my mom used to tell me this every time I feel science. Subbiases is in Gongzimo. It means that success is failure's mother. When I was in year seven, my chemistry grades and biology and physics weren't that great as I was pretty new to the subject. And I kept getting C's and D's while my friends all scored an A on A star. And that made me feel pretty sad, and I was annoyed and crying whatever my mom screamed at me. But one time, after I got a C, which at that time was pretty higher than my last grade, she stopped and stopped and stopped and stopped asking, Did you study hard enough? Did you pay attention to the teacher? And at that time, I didn't view it because I felt like I had no hope in that subject. But what my mom told me is that the more you pay attention in class, the more you try and stay after class to ask the teacher what was that what is the choice of that or whatever you were learning, the more you find yourself for your mistakes and for how many, no matter how many D's or E's or whatever failing grades you get. Now, after my mocks, I got in, I've gotten 35 out of 40, which is a pretty good grade for biology. If you fail, if you fall and scrape your knees on that bike, and no matter what you do, there's always fears across the path to success. Don't give up. Try, try again and try to make yourself as perfect as possible. Because no matter what, no matter what we try to learn, talent always comes with failures. And it doesn't mean that at first when we try something, we'll get, a, we'll get an automatic success, an automatic hundred. You always have to tell yourself what you did wrong. And as the more you tell yourself what you did wrong, the more epiphanies you create and the more time you know who you truly are. So, if you fall down on that dirty road while you're riding your bike, get back up. Continue cycling until you finally reach the path of yourself. Epiphanies are splendid. And they can be really anywhere, of course. From a small epiphany, you should really stop procrastinating and get your work done. Or you pick one, like your relationship with someone is mentally or physically abusive. Can be, can be drastically different. However, epiphanies are also mistakes. And that's what leads us to know who we truly are as people.